fake. Manipulation and truth are crazy relatives fighting for the right to be heard. But we are guardians of information security. Welcome to Stop Fake. Watch this. Western media, in particular the German Frankfurter Allgemein, published this thesis about the apparently failed counteroffensive. They claim that even the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Valery Zaluzhny, recognized the defeat. It is nothing but manipulation. Zaluzhny only stated about the low pace of offensive actions and the need for a technological improvement. The simple fact is that we see everything the enemy is doing and they see everything we are doing. In order for us to break this deadlock we need something new. Like the gunpowder which the Chinese invented and which we are still using to kill each other. It's time to end magical thinking about Russia's defeat. It is a title of an article published by American The Wall Street Journal. The authors claim that there are no signs on the front line that Russia is losing, and Putin, they say, is holding on to power. The article also says that international attention is focused on the escalations in the Middle East, and support for Ukraine in the United States is allegedly decreasing. Where did the roots of such a lie come from? Well, it's obvious, it sprouts from the same place. Russian officials claim that the Ukrainians have no incentive to defend their territories, and there is almost no military equipment left. The amount of military equipment is decreasing. People are less and less motivated. You don't have to notice that one comrade or another has died. And when everyone is dead and you are left alone, elementary fear begins to overcome. The Ukrainian army has no desire to go on a counter-offensive. One can read thousands of articles, but when it comes to the battlefield, only experts should be trusted. The Institute for the Study of War, on the contrary, reports on the successes of the defense forces of Ukraine on the left bank of the Kherson region. They emphasized that Western weapons play a significant role in the advancement of Ukrainian forces. The end of Western support to Ukraine would strip Ukraine of these and other capabilities. The result would not be a continuation of the current positional warfare, but rather the opening up of opportunities for the Russians to renew large-scale mechanized offensives with good prospects for success. The strengthening of Western support for Ukraine scares the Russians. For example, according to British intelligence, they are quite concerned about the supply of Western fighter jets. Russia has likely expedited integrating Mainstay and SA-21 partially because it is concerned about the prospect of Ukraine deploying Western-provided combat aircraft. US President Joe Biden has repeatedly stated that the United States of America will support Ukraine as long as necessary. He convinces that Washington is able to help both Ukraine and Israel at the same time and provide its own defense. We're the United States of America for God's sake, the most powerful nation in the history, not in the world, in the history of the world, the history of the world. We can take care of both of these and still maintain our overall international defense. 1-0 in favor of Ukraine in this anti-fake battle. Watch this. The Iranian publication Rizalat claims the president of Ukraine finds himself more and more trapped in the war with Russia. In the meantime, the vast arms and financial aid of the West to Kyiv has not been able to prevent the solution of the mystery of the battle in the eastern parts of Ukraine. And as a conclusion, the publication suggests that Kyiv will not only fail to become a member of the European Union, but also won't have the slightest chance of joining the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. In Iran, the prevailing view is that most Western media outlets agree that the accession of a war-torn country with over 40 million people will incur huge cost for the European Union. Iran supplies Russia with drones and the rest of the world with the fake articles. Articles may say anything, but in reality, the facts tell a different story. I want to tell you how impressed we are by the reforms you've made in the midst of a war. I know that you are in the process of completing outstanding reforms. If this happens, and I'm confident, Ukraine can reach its ambitious goal of moving to the next stage in the accession process. 
and the European Union isn't merely prepared to eventually welcome Ukraine into its fold. Officials state that they are committed to doing everything possible from their end to expedite the accession process for Ukraine. We know the sacrifice that your people have endured for Europe, and we must honor it not only with words, but with action, with the political will to ensure easier trade and with the fastest possible accession process, with funds for your people, with help in reconstruction, with training for your troops. The words of these women are clearly believed more than the Iranian article. Watch this. Freeze Ukraine until it wants to sign a peace treaty. That's the plan. Quite abusive though, but with a large numbers of flaws. New York Times reported, citing Ukrainian experts and current former officials, that Ukraine's energy system is even more fragile than it was a year ago. In an interview, they revealed ongoing issues with power stations due to previous Russian attacks, incomplete repairs at substations, and a lack of critical equipment, like transformers. However, there is no official information available to journalists from Times about the current state of affairs in the energy sector. They note that the Ukrainian authorities have declined to provide detailed data on the current condition of the power grid, citing it as confidential information during wartime. As a result, their conclusions and forecasts are based on the opinions of energy industry experts or on the opinions of Russian propaganda. The topic of the Ukrainian winter worries Russia like never before. Local publications continuously informed concerned Russians that Ukraine is freezing right now and no Western aid will save Kyiv from a cold winter. Talking about the West, it turns out that all their energy and other problems happened because of their refusal to depend on Russian energy. This was openly announced by the president of Russia. This means they have to buy elsewhere. Without this it is impossible. You have to be absolutely stupid not to understand this. And since their volume of consumption remains the same, it is impossible to exist without our energy. Ukraine having long ceased reliance on Russian gas, has accumulated sufficient energy resources before the onset of cold weather that can help sustain the heating season. Of course, we are ready certainly, a much better and higher level of anti-aircraft defense. This is also obvious, that only impact that can have on the power system, in terms of negative impact, is massive shelling. Watch this. And now I propose to talk about animals. The focus is on Spanish pigs. The Austrian publication Express published an article about Ukrainian wheat, which instead of feeding people in Africa, ended up with pigs in Spain. The author claims that Spain paid Ukraine more, hence the grain was sent there. The thesis that whoever pays more gets it was widely circulated by Russian media. Propagandists quoted the words of Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Vershinin regarding the West allegedly buying cheap grain and selling it at a higher price to countries in need. Such headlines are examples of Kremlin manipulations. In February 2023, when the express material about grain sales for pigs was released, Ukraine actually dispatched around 35 vessels of agricultural products, including wheat to countries in Africa, Asia and Europe. Yes, Spain is indeed one of the largest importers, but this fact doesn't hinder Africa from regularly receiving Ukrainian grain. African countries actually attribute their grain shortage problems to Russia. That's why leaders of African nations are urging Russia to unblock the grain corridor through the Black Sea so that Ukraine can freely supply wheat to countries in need. Africa is also feeling the negative impact of this war. Our grain prices have grown up and there is shortage. Fertilizer prices have also grown up. So even if we are thousands of kilometers away as Af-Rican countries, we are feeling the impact of this war. 
Despite obstacles, Ukraine plans to continue fulfilling global commitments to food security by delivering grain to Africa at prices affordable for its countries. This is despite Russia deliberately disrupting the grain deal. One of the goals pursued by Russia's withdrawal from the Black Sea Grain Initiative is to provoke an increase in grain prices and sell as much Russian grain as possible at these high prices, including mixing stolen Ukrainian grain with Russian grain and make money on it to finance their war machine. Watch this. Yes, today we once again sorted out the facts from fiction and shared verified information with you. This was Stop Fake. See you next time. Mm -hmm.